This is Tom Fox. I'd like to welcome you to the newest addition to the Compliance Podcast Network, the Compliance Tip of the Day. This is the podcast where you bring you daily insights and practical advice on navigating the ever-evolving landscape of compliance requirements. Whether you're a seasoned compliance professional or just starting your journey, my aim in this podcast is to provide you with a bite-sized, actionable tip to help you stay on top of your compliance game. Join us as we explore the latest trends from the Department of Justice, share some best practices, demystify complex compliance issues to help keep your organization doing business ethically and in compliance, and at the end of the day, more profitably. Tune in daily for your dose of compliance wisdom. Let's make compliance a little less daunting, one tip at a time. Now a word from the sponsor of the Compliance Podcast Network, Ethico. In compliance, the value of anonymous reporting is undeniable. But with Ethico, anonymity doesn't mean a loss of connection. Our blinded, two-way communication fosters an environment of trust and confidentiality, encouraging open and honest dialogue. It's not just about receiving reports. It's about understanding the story behind each one, creating a culture of integrity and respect. Transform your approach to anonymous reporting with Ethico. Begin your journey at ethico.com slash CPN, where you can book a demo, access an exclusive white paper by Tom Fox titled The ROI of Compliance, and utilize our free ROI calculator. Today, I want to take up a topic that we probably do not talk enough about in compliance, and that's the lowly reference check. Uh, Many practitioners feel this is of little to no value because prospective candidates will only list references they believe will give them a glowing recommendation of character, and that leads to really a pro forma reference check. My experience in this has been a little bit different, and Kevin Ryan, in an article in the Harvard Business Review, said that uh, his experience is quite different too as well. His company takes three steps in a hiring process, resume review, in-person interview, and reference checks. And while the resumes are good for setting basic qualifications, not much else. The um, uh, in-person interviews can also be skewed in favor of those who speak well or present well. Although, uh, as a part of the interview process, I think it's important to recognize you can uh, communicate your culture and your cultural expectations around your company. But the reference check is a way he believes is to learn about uh, individuals. Uh, many people believe reference checks may not be of great value, but it's a way to dig up people who will speak candidly. And that's certainly been my experience. Uh, if you speak to the reference, only references listed on the resume or other application, you may not get the most robust uh, appraisal, but my experience has been that when people uh, do list uh, persons, those persons really take their references uh, seriously, and they will give you information uh, that is much more than pro forma. And you can take a literally a deep dive into an employee's history with one employer. You may get anecdotal stories that you can follow up on in other areas. And you may get some specific subject matter expertise that you have not really considered going forward. So uh, the lowly reference check can actually be a pretty powerful tool for compliance. You have to have the discipline to utilize it, utilize it fully, utilize it correctly, and utilize it in a way that gives you the opportunity to find out about the whole person not just uh, what's on their resume, but really what's in between and what else may not be in there that would be of importance for your evaluation. So this month's sponsor of the Compliance Podcast Network, including this podcast, is Ethico. Have you ever wondered about the ROI of your compliance program or had concerns with presenting budget proposals to your CFO? Well, I partnered with Ethico to write a white paper on the ROI of compliance and how you can think through compliance as an investment strategy. Ethico has put together a ROI calculator for you. Check them out on the website. This is Tom Fox again. This new podcast, Compliance Tip of the Day, will appear daily. And frankly, it's one of the most requested 
topics for a podcast that I get on a regular basis. It's going to be short and sweet with uh, one tip with some takeaways that you can utilize to implement into your compliance program. If you've got a question that you would like a tip on, please submit them uh, through our website and we will use them in an upcoming episode. The Compliance Tip of the Day is a production of the award-winning Compliance Podcast Network.